Hey, so when I get a question more than once, I usually do a video on it so that if you're interested in the same thing, maybe it can help you too. So I get this question and it's always in a different way, but more or less it's what's the best thing for me to resell or what would I suggest someone reselling? We'll get to that in one second. My name is Marion, and I'm a tire and beyond on all social media. And I love reselling. I love the thrill of the hunt. And I'm a reseller on Poshmark, other platforms, and I also send into the real real. And I just love it. And I had a retail store until the end of 2021 until I decided to close and just go totally online. And I love that. So if you ever have any questions about the retail store, why I closed, why I opened, just ask in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. And if I have more than a few people, I'll do a video on it. I'm always open to answering any questions. I feel like that's what I'm here for because that's how I got helped. So, what is the best thing to sell? Now, that's the hardest question, I think, that you could ask any reseller because <laughs> I'm, it's not a bad question. It's a great question because it could help a lot of people. But I, it's the hardest question because it depends on what you love. Now, let me start by saying selling things first from your closet or your house that you know about or that you love because you bought for yourself are the best things to start with. So let's say you love pillows or you love leopard and you have some things that you want to get rid of. Start with that. Let's say you have so many clothes you don't know what to do with them. Start with that. If you don't have anything in your home that you want to get rid of, which is highly doubtful, unless you just moved into a new home and you got rid of all your old stuff, then let's start here. Here are the different things that I can tell you so you can make, a, make your own choice and your own decision. I sell a little bit of everything, which I don't think is the right thing to do, but I don't think it's the wrong thing either. I do that only because I started with clothing because I started with clothing from my own closet. And then when I got the retail store, I bought so much clothing because it was mostly clothing and it was new and pre-loved clothing and gifts. So I also made sure I had gift wear like beautiful painted glasses and all that kind of stuff that you don't have to ship. So with that, I have lots of clothing to sell. Now, since then, I have found that I prefer selling small items, jewelry. I'm looking around. I always look around. So when you see me looking around, it's because right now there are still things in my living room, in my living area, but they will not be here soon. I'm working diligently to get them the heck out of here. That's my best way to say it. Don't get things in your living space. Don't put things in your living space. Okay. So that's a little tip. So I'm working with littler things now. I'm going to say ceramics. I work with porcelain, ceramic, jewelry. I'm going to give you a list of different things and tell you what I like best, what's good about them, what's bad about them. And then you can make your own decision. So Jewelry, ceramics, I'm looking around. I got this great, this isn't going on any. Ooh, I can't even pick it up. Darn it. All right. Well, it's a gumball machine. A good friend gave it to me to sell. And I think I'm going to sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Because that's where you can sell things like that. It could be on Macari Local also. But I'm not a big fan of Macari. Anyway. So, I'm looking around. I sell... What else do I sell? Oh, mugs, which I guess can go in ceramics. I'm looking, I'm looking. And things that are a little bigger, like Pyrex dishes and some books I sell. And just anything you could think of. I've sold electronics, 
so let me get into what I like the most and what I like the least. So, and let me also say that I sell everything that you can wear, including jewelry. So anything that you can wear on your body, hats, scarves, I'm going to do this, gloves, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, pants, tops, dresses, skirts, shoes, socks, and the list goes on. Ankle bracelets, you know, anything that you can wear on your body. Coats, jackets, blah, blah, blah. Women's mostly, but I also sell men's and I sell kids and some pet things. I sell home goods. I sell electronics. I'm trying to think of the list in my head that is on my Poshmark closet because I mostly sell on Poshmark. I love Poshmark. So I love selling clothes that are the trends. So my advice, sorry that I just moved that. My advice is if you're someone who wants to start selling clothing, then find things. First, take out your clothing and see what you like photographing. Watch some videos on how to photograph certain things and see what you like photographing the best. Because, let me tell you why. Because you may love jeans and you may say, I just want to sell jeans, but you might hate photographing them. You might love tops and hate photographing them. So take out pieces of your clothing, take out pieces of jewelry, see what you love and don't love about photographing them. Research them a little bit if you don't know a lot about them. See what you like and don't like and I'd say go through your pros and cons list. Jewelry. Jewelry I love because it's small. I could have thousands of pieces of jewelry I'm looking around just to see and still have plenty of space. You can make some really good returns on vintage jewelry. So I focus on that now. If I were to just come into reselling and I decided, all right, what is the best thing for me to sell? I think I'd pick vintage jewelry, which is so weird because never liked vintage. Not that I didn't like it. I really didn't care about it. Didn't like antiques. And now I am the total opposite. So now the reasons I'd pick vintage jewelry is because first of all, most of it's gorgeous. Some of it's the ugliest thing you've ever seen. And they charge nothing for it because they think it's not good. I bought something that was silver for like 25 cents. Sterling silver. So I enjoy that. And I have made my most money on one piece that I sold, that I sold, I bought for $1.50, $2. And I forget what I made on it. I think profit would be like 130, 125. And I don't mean a dollar. And that was great. So I now pick up more, way more vintage jewelry, as long as it's a good price. I get it as cheap as possible. And I'm talking 25, 50, 75 cents, a dollar, a dollar, 50, two dollars. If it's over that, I'm going to look it up. If it's not, I'm going to use all the knowledge that I have right now to just say, all right, it's $2. I'll buy it. But I don't do that with clothes anymore. But we'll get into that. So jewelry for me, and I don't mean regular costume jewelry unless it's really good name brand, new, modern costume jewelry. I don't sell a lot of it you have to sell it cheaper. I prefer to do vintage. Now, I also make a lot of sales. Now, so the good thing about jewelry is, before I get into the next thing, it's small. It doesn't take up a lot of space. You, I, you can just put it in something and I want to get something. So please bear with me a second, okay? All right. So with jewelry, I'll keep talking. 
You can literally have it in something like this and have so many pieces. So now this is only, I don't know, a 20th of the amount of jewelry I have, right? But I'm also selling this, but right now you can fit so much in here. I have everything. Now, a lot of things are in their own, but I have bracelets, I have keychains, I have rings, <laughs> vintage, you know, and these just to show you the jewelry so that you can get an idea of what I sell that's vintage. Now, things like this that are modern, I enjoy selling. One second, that's an earring stuck in there. I enjoy selling. But this one may even be vintage because they're gorgeous. As a matter of fact, I'd like to keep that, but I try selling everything. But just little things that you sell, you can put in little things. So you don't have to waste a lot of space like you do with clothing. So if you were to start, you could literally start with this much and be fine. So jewelry, love because it's small. I can't think of a reason why I don't like jewelry. I've, I don't think I've ever had a return on it or not a return, but a case opened on Poshmark. And we'll talk about that in another episode because I have questions on cases being open. So I'd also like to do a video about that. It ships well. Now, the only thing that happened to me once was because I used to put them in really small packages, they must have got lost in the mail. But it's only been one out of hundreds. So what I do, let me just look and see if I have my envelopes here where they're supposed to be. Of course I don't. I ship them either in a, uh, either in, oh, hello, either in one of these, I left them there purposely, 59, getting old, forget things, right, but I'm going to actually show you how easy it is, so with mine, I put them in a little thank you envelope, so let's pretend this is a little thank you envelope that says thank you on it. And then sometimes I'll put it in another, I'll wrap it. It depends. Like if it was something like this and I think, oh, wow, there's a chance that, you know, those pearls may get affected. I'm going to take something and wrap it. Now, of course, this isn't what I'm going to take and wrap it, but I'm going to take something. I'm going to wrap it and I'm going to push it all the way down to the bottom and then I fold and fold over again so that it's so protected because this is the bubble, the bubble envelope. That's not what it's called though. I forget what it's called, but I do know what it's called. Anyway, now I lost that. There we go. So that's very easy with jewelry and all of it's tiny. And the same thing I do with something like this something like this. There are certain things you wouldn't even have to put anything around. You know, sometimes you have things that are really tiny, but I would put it in a padded envelope for sure. And you get these free from USPS. And if you didn't know that, go on your USPS, go on the USPS, United States Postal Office Service site, and you can get those for free. And they're bubble mailers. That's what they are. Bubble mailers. And these are 9.5 by 12.5. Padded flat rate envelope is what they call them. So they're padded. That's what I want to say. So jewelry is very easy because of that. Now I also love, I hate when I look around. I'm sorry about that, but I'm looking around to see if I could show you something. Well, let's just pretend that this is a vintage mug. Or a regular mug like it is. I love Hello Kitty. And some coffees. So what I'm going to do with this, first let me tell you, I do enjoy selling mugs. I do enjoy selling ceramic type things. And 
they seem to sell, not the mugs, but vintage ceramic type things, ceramic type music boxes sell for me. And also some of the vintage dishes, um, but the Pyrex type ones, so they're heavier. And now I'm starting to sell plates, so I'll let you know how I feel about that in the future. But when you're wrapping those, now I love selling them because they're beautiful. I love thrifting for them. I love picking them up. It's the hunt. Uh, I find the cutest and most unique things because you're looking in a thrift store, so you're finding things that were from years ago, and those sell well. It's learning how to ship them. And let me know if you want to see a me packing in the future so that you can really see how to ship certain things because I learned from trial and error. Let me tell you. So shipping them is not as easy as running to pick them out. Shipping them, you have to really learn how to ship them. And you could always watch a YouTube video. That's how I learn everything to see how to ship them. So the positive thing for me with them is they're beautiful. They sell. So if you have anything around the house that maybe isn't really sentimental to you and it's really vintage or antique, try selling it and then learn how to wrap it because that's the only part that's not great. Sometimes things will break. So you really, really have to learn how to pack them. I've pretty much learned how to pack things so well now, not 100% of the time, but so well that you have to listen to this. Do I have one of her? You know the bags that you can buy from uh, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, just the plastic bags. You could even buy them from the supermarket. I have learned how to wrap frames in those as long as I have the right other uh, wraps and supplies to put in between them because I had to do it recently because I didn't have a box that fit these frames but I had a big bag and I figured that out so if you learn from the start how to wrap those things then they're a great thing it's a great thing to sell if you like selling those type of things now I love mugs right I I feel like and I'll take my mug again. I feel like when you have a mug, now I don't have a favorite mug. Well, I do actually have a favorite mug. It's not here, but I have many favorite mugs and that's because they kind of are things that you enjoy looking at. So I have Hello Kitty, I have Tinkerbell and the list goes on and people like buying things like that. So it's good to sell. There's not a big return on them unless you get them from like some stores have them for 25 cents then fine i mean mugs is selling literally in the stores now have you been in the stores where they have really nice mugs they're 15 to 30 dollars it's crazy a mug so you can get and you can get money for them so i'm not saying how much because you can get from eight to fifteen dollars some a little more so depending on what you pay for them i wouldn't just sell mugs but ceramic type things music boxes things like that are selling well for me i can say since i started selling vintage items and i don't even know how i started that you know i started watching videos on youtube like i always do and saw what they were worth and decided, oh, let me try this and ended up loving it. So that's my likes and dislikes on vintage ceramic porcelain type things. Also, I love fairies, but I'm not going to sell a lot of them anymore because fairies and angels, you have to wrap the wings so well because those I have had more than two, I think three or four break. I learned how to wrap them now, but it's still scary and it's a pain and it takes up more time. But if you have the time and you don't mind, learn. <laughs> Maybe what I'll do is little videos just showing how I wrap different things eventually. So jewelry, we got through. We got through this ceramics clothing. 
clothing's easy to ship. I can tell you that much. I didn't get into that part. I told you just learn from your closet. Clothing for me, it's, it's easy to take pictures of, but you have to set up a spot. Now, if you have a background remover, you don't have to set up a great spot because like I have something in the way that I can take out with the background, but jewelry and stuff, I do right here on the couch. I either take my light and put it over here or I don't have to because I have window light and I can take pictures anywhere, anytime. Clothing that's a little bit bigger, you have to hang it or you have to lay it so you have to make sure you have a nice surface and you know you have to make sure if you have animals there's not dogs hair and all that other stuff so though clothing is a good thing to sell I stick or I would stick with the trends because you're more likely to sell it and if you don't like taking pictures of it then you'd rather it sell quickly and when you have a lot of clothing like I have sorry to jump back to the clothing but you don't have all things that are trends so it takes very long for them to sell take up a lot a lot a lot a lot of did i say a lot of room all right shoes love selling shoes like there's no tomorrow they're easy to ship up usps also has boxes shoe boxes that you can get for free easy to ship as long as you pad them a little bit, if you think anything could happen, some of them can go right in here when people buy flip-flops, when they buy sandals, when they buy flats. I usually put them in two, but you can put them right in there, sell easily, if you like shoes. And any kind of shoe sells, eventually. Uh, no, no. Any kind of shoe ships easily, some of them take a long time to sell so you want to get what's in trend if you can but start with yours you have shoes that you don't wear if you have shoes and you wear them all let me know in the comments because i'll be shocked i have a lot of shoes that i'm going to be getting rid of if anybody's looking for stilettos <laughs> seriously anyway so shoes i love selling but you have to love selling them they I say don't take up a lot of room. Some people say do take up a lot of room. So it depends on what you do. I put them in bins. So they don't take up a lot of room for me. They're still smaller than the amount of clothing that I have. Socks I sell. They're not good unless you sell, sell them in bulk. I sell, let's see, what else? What else? I'm just trying to think of different things on the body. It all goes with clothes. So clothes jewelry electronics here's the problem with electronics they might work and then by the time they get there they don't that's what's happened so be careful with electronics they're also heavier so you have to make sure they're okay uh, if you're on Poshmark you have to make sure they're under five pounds otherwise you have to pay for the extra postage and if they're on other platforms there it's a lot for shipping so some people don't want to buy them so that's electronics now big items i personally don't sell unless it's like the big pictures that i sold online i'll sell them on facebook marketplace i mean i have bikes bicycles on facebook marketplace i'm gonna have the gumball machine on facebook marketplace so i do sell bigger things but not online I'm just looking around to see if I see anything else and I'm trying to think in the question if there was anything specific in any of the questions but I don't think so and I think I do sell pet stuff cute little jackets and things so if you like things like that maybe you're someone who loves collectibles just learn how to wrap them. Maybe you're someone who loves fountain pens. Those would be easy, right? Maybe you're someone who loves, I don't know, what can I think of? Bags. Bags are very easy to send. Just make sure you check them thoroughly. Take pictures of every part of them because I get 
open cases or I just got one. I don't get open. I've had two or three on bags in my lifetime of reselling, which is a few years, maybe more now. And I sometimes think that people have the same bag and then show pictures of that bag when they open a case, which I'm not happy about, but that's all right. That's for another video. <laughs> so uh, let's look around. Yep. I think that's it. I don't think too many people asked me other. Oh, there was one about gowns that have a lot of sequins. If I like selling those type of things, I do, but they take up a lot of room. They're a pain to take pictures of and get a good picture. I can't get a good catalog picture to save my life that I take myself. And I don't really like using stock photos and you're really not supposed to with most brands. So I personally don't enjoy that, but I do sell them because I'm trying to get rid of them from all my inventory. So that was a question within questions. And I really think that those were all the questions. If you have any other questions about how it is to resell other things, please leave it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. If I have enough of them, I'll do another video on it. And if you like content like this, give me a thumbs up or a like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want more content like this. And let me know what you're interested in. And I will talk about it. See you in the next video.